right, so this is the second video today. Um, <clears throat> I just uh, uploaded one, and this is um, kind of piggybacking off of the first one that I made uh, that is titled The Rich, The Poor, The Trash. Um, so I was just talking uh, with my barber as he was cutting my hair, and, and we got to actually talking about labels, which is what I was really talking about in the last video. But I really didn't, it, it was about labels, but it was it was a little different. But I wanted to talk about <clears throat> accepting. Um, so let me, let me say this. We were talking about these pronouns that came up. And we were joking about something and all of a sudden the pronouns came in, you know. And uh, these new pronouns that people are wanting to be referred to. And here's the thing. <clears throat> People are trying to force others to identify them in a certain way, using a certain pronoun, a certain name, a certain whatever, whatever they want to be identified as or referred to as, I should say. And if you live in truth, if you know what truth is, you will not honor this. You will not honor this at all. So <clears throat> the thing is, the creator makes no mistakes. And so... If you are born in a male body, then you are a male, and that is what you're supposed to be. And if you're born female, that is what you are, and that's what you're supposed to be. Now, <clears throat> the thing is, whatever, and here's, here's the truth of it. The truth of it is, you can cut off your penis, you can have a vagina made, you can have one built in. I don't know how that works, but if that's a thing, that's a thing. You can have breasts, you can grow breasts, you can have them installed, you can have them cut off, you can do whatever you want to your physical body. But when you die, you will be that very thing you were born as, whether it was a male or a female. Those are your only two options. Those are your only two options. And that's when the truth of your, your identity will be truly realized by you. And some, some people won't even they, they won't understand why this is. The physical the, the, the physical body can be altered, but the spirit body cannot. And so whatever label you want to identify yourself as, that's fine. Like, you can call yourself something, but in order to change your identity in terms of your, your, your sex, your gender, I should say, that never changes. You will always be that gender. Always. That is something that you cannot change. Your soul is what dictated the, the energy of your soul, I should say, the masculine and the ratio, I should say, the ratio of masculine and feminine is what dictated what is going on? I don't know what's going on here. Let me see. Um this is weird. Oh, I see. <clears throat> it is what dictates your the body that you manifest. So whatever body that you have when you enter your mother's womb, whatever develops your soul created that. And there's a reason why your soul created that. So for you to come in and decide that you want to become... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even know your lane was in here. Um, for you to decide that you want to be something else or God made a mistake, that's, that's a falsehood. That is an untrue belief that you have. And I understand why someone would feel that, but that's, that's just it. I understand why someone would feel that, but the person feeling it, most people don't understand why they feel that way some people will say you know I feel like you know I've always felt like a girl could be born and say I've always felt like a boy since I was a, a little kid I never felt like I was a girl well there's reasons why that would be happening and a lot of it has to do with spirits that are surrounding them spirits that surround them spirits that are attached to them spirits that are over cloaking them all of these different Feelings that you feel that are opposite of what you truly see are coming from spirits. And most people don't know this. And if you don't believe in it, if you don't believe in any of this stuff, then how could you possibly find out the truth of what's really going on? And so people want to be identified as to how they feel. And this is and I've said it before, you cannot you you cannot always trust your feelings. Because they will misguide you if you are a wounded soul. And the bottom line is we are all wounded souls. There are aspects of ourselves that we don't 
recognize or there are lots of pain and emotional injuries and emotional wounds that dwell within the soul that would cause us to think in an unloving way that would cause us to see things in a way that's not true and this is what's happening this is what's happening people so when we pick these these labels these uh identifying labels we have to understand why we're doing it we truly have to understand on a soul level why we feel this way it doesn't matter what it is if you want to be be emo i i don't know why i keep coming emo emo <laughs> emo was one of the first things that that was introduced to me that was different it's like oh i'm emo i'm emo i don't i still don't know what that means but people identify that as being something um or gothic or or now it's you know I'm I'm a, a him her when I'm neither one of those things because this is how people feel or people say I don't even know what all the pronouns are I think there's like 31 of them that's too much when there's only two there's only two there's male and female how you feel is based on and the reason here's the thing the reason why this is more prevalent now is because the emotional injuries that are passed down from soul to soul to soul and each, with each generation that passes, each soul gets darker and darker and darker. Because each previous generation, they don't want to deal with the emotional injuries that are within their soul. They want to completely ignore everything. And they want to make everything pretty and right when it's impossible when their soul is dark. Dark and ugly. They want everything to be pretty and right and everything in their soul is dark and ugly. And so they ignore it and so it's passed on to their children. And so if you take... A, a person, one soul, let's say it's a mother, in all her darkness, and then you take the father in all his darkness, and you put it into one soul, now you have darkness that is doubled. And now they have to try to live life, and then they have children, and so now that double dark soul has children with another double dark soul, and now it's quadruple. And then you keep going, and this is why each and every, every um, generation is dark. It gets darker and they're more lost than the previous. And this is like, and I'm not saying that three or four or five or eight or ten generations ago people were were better, but in a way they were. Because in some on some level, there was a sense of even if they pretended to be, they were there was a an a, a, how should I say a desire to live in integrity and, and have morals. But now, no. Even if they if they did things behind closed doors, they would present. And but the thing is, now the facade is not able to be presented anymore. Now people are really living the only thing that they can, which is the darkness. And this is, and, but they're still constantly trying to run away from it. And this is why it's going to get progressively worse, progressively worse. We were, I mean, the fact that people don't even know how to identify themselves is an issue because they're running away from who they really are. They don't even know who they are. They're trying to find themselves. They have no idea, so they find all these different labels, and they create new ones to fit in because they they don't they don't feel comfortable in their skin, but they don't know why. They the girl who, who's a little girl who feels like a boy doesn't know why, and the little boy who feels like a girl they don't know why. They just know they feel this way, and there's nothing for them because they don't there's nothing for them to identify with. So they now they have to create something, and now people are creating everything, and they're they're trying to run away from themselves, and the, meaning they're trying to run run away from their true selves but they don't know what their true selves are so now they're trying to create things that they feel but their feelings are false because they have a lot of influence and they have a lot of influence because they have a lot of pain that allows them to be influenced this is why the truth must be upheld this is why the truth must be spoken this is why the truth must be at the forefront of all things so Someone wants you to identify themselves as something that they're not. You have a choice to either say, no, I can't do that because that's not the truth. Despite them wanting to be called that. You like, If someone wants to live in a lie, allow them to live in the lie. But if you're living in truth, you can't support that lie. And so you have to... Am I at the carpool lane? I don't know what's going on here. Um, so... Yeah, it, it did change. Okay, so... So we have to understand these labels, man. These labels, these labels, these labels, these labels. <laughs> these labels. Get away from the labels. Because you are limited by the label. 
And the thing is, the label is false. It's a, it's, it's created by man, it's false. And as you adopt the label, as you live in the label, as you try to be the label, you are limiting yourself. Most importantly, you're limiting yourself from, from accepting truth. So the person who feels that they are a different sex than, or a different gender than what they are, they don't know the truth. The truth about them being overcloaked or the truth about them being influenced by a spirit or the truth about something outside of themselves that's causing them to feel that way. They don't know the truth. And by creating a label to say, oh, this is what I am now, they'll never know the truth because they're constantly living the lie. They're constantly living the untruth. And they can't find truth that way. They can't find truth. And the thing is, once they make changes, physical changes, they they now have solidified whatever they whatever false belief that they have accepted to that they have chosen to explain why they feel the way that they feel. And really it's not it's not explaining anything. They're just buying into the untruth. So if a male feels like a female and he makes the, the change, he has now solidified that and now that is the truth for him. And you try to give them the truth and they can't. And now they've put themselves in a position where they can't accept the truth because now they would have to accept the fact that they did something that they weren't supposed to do to themselves. That they made a mistake, a physical, permanent mistake to their physical body. But it's not permanent because your spirit body is still what it was when you were born. That's what it is. And for for those who are, who are born with both... Uh, uh, male and female anatomy, for those who are born like that in the physical, everything is corrected in the spirit body. Everything is corrected. What that is, I don't know. Because the, both are there. So, uh-oh. I'm going to go over here. Um, I don't know. That I don't know. They'll find out when they pass. But I know if you're born a male, then that's what you're supposed to be. There really aren't any mistakes there. If you're born a female, it's the same thing. But once you die, I mean, you can cut off your penis, but just like I said, you're still going to have one when you die. And there's a video, I, I'll i try to find it. It was about, um, it's actually about this, this specific topic. This guy was born a male. His mom named him Max, or his dad named him Max. His parents named him Max. And then, at, at some point, he thought he was Maxine. And so he became Maxine. And that's how he lived his life. And when he died, he couldn't figure out why he did not have breasts and why he had a penis again. He could not figure that out. And he didn't understand what was going on. That, on top of all the other things that he didn't know what was going on in the spirit world, like trying to figure that out, trying to figure out why your body is the way that it is, when you specifically have identified yourself as being something and you have altered your body to make sure that you're in alignment with that belief, and then to die and all of that change? Crazy stuff. But you're only confused if you have beliefs that are not true. That's the only thing that confuses you. Are holding beliefs, holding things that are not true. And then as you become a, a more loving spirit, I mean as a more loving soul, as you become a, a person who wants to hold truth, as you hold more truth, you see the untruths of all of these things. But you can't see them when you're living in the untruth. You can't see it at all. You can only see the degradation of your soul. The result of your soul. And if there's untruths within your soul, that's all that's that's all you're going to want to see because you want to support all the things that are within you. All the beliefs that you have. That's what we do is we look for the things that's, that support our beliefs. And if you believe that you're something opposite than what you truly are... You're going to look for things to support that, which is why people look for things to support their identity, which is why they're creating these labels. All of this stuff, like I said in the last video, we are creating our reality based on the things we believe. So that what you believe, you create. But if you want to know the truth, if you want clarity as to why you, you're having these different feelings... Why you, why you feel you are so different than what you are seeing in the mirror or seeing with your physical eyes. If you want to know the truth of that, the truth will come to you. 
if you want to know the truth of your if you want to if you want to release the the things that are are causing you to feel differently they will come the things those things will be released because that's a desire of yours but people don't have a desire to release the things that are within them that are dark they have a desire to support the things that they feel because that's how they feel and they they say i'm supposed to honor how i feel and this is how i feel but when you're being manipulated when you're feeling feelings that aren't your feelings then no you you're not supposed to trust your feelings but most people don't know this People always say, go with your gut, trust your feelings, but sometimes you can't do that because your soul is so dark, and if you don't know that your soul is dark, if you don't know that these things that are within you are causing your harm, then you'll continue following your feeling, following your gut, and sometimes your gut will mislead you because it's not your gut, it's someone else's. <laughs> sometimes there's highway patrols that sit in these little nooks and crannies. There's that one there now, but... They like to hide a little between the walls on um, the end and start of the walls. Anyway, um, <sighs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so anyway, it doesn't matter what label you identify as, but it's what's important isn't to really worry about the labels. It's to worry about how you feel, but you won't know that if you don't have the truth as the guide the truth as the benchmark that's what needs to be your benchmark the truth and if you don't have that then you're you're always going to be screwed you're always going to make a um a decision that's wrong meaning you're going to make a decision that's going to harm you later down the line that's what happens a degraded soul makes choices that are more degrading that cause more degradation there is the angry man in the Porsche. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah. Be mindful of it. Be mindful of it. Because we, with, you know, the thing is, we mislead ourselves. We mislead ourselves by the things that we believe. And the things that we believe are where our actions come from, our choices. We make a choice based on our beliefs. So, people believe that if they go to church and give money, that their sins will be washed away, I guess. I don't know. They believe they have to do it. So their action is to reach into the wallet or the purse and give money. And then they pray they don't have anything. It's a belief. False belief. There's like same thing with going to confession if you're a Catholic you have a belief that if you go in and talk to the priest and tell the priest what you did that you're, you'll be forgiven that's a false belief you won't know it here you can know it here because you're getting a lot of signs that say hey that's not true because you're still suffering but then when you die you really see the truth of all the things that you've done on earth all the things that we have all done on earth we will find out the truth of it that's where the truth is and it's not like it's not available here because the truth is available everywhere. At any given moment in your experience, the truth is, is there to stare you in the face. It is staring you in the face. We just ignore it. Every karmic event is truth presented to you. Hey, this is what you're doing. Hey, look, this is what you're doing. You have pain, so you're not loving. You have pain, so you're not loving. You had this bad experience, so you're not loving. Because that's what karma is. Pain received for a choice that we made that was unloving and in order to make an unloving choice we have to have a lack of love within ourselves it's that easy it's that simple it's not rocket science it's not rocket science at all where am i going oh um so so be aware be aware of these beliefs that you have because a lot of them are false and if they loved you they have led you down a place of, of pain, then understand that they're going to continue to lead you down a place or a path of pain. Because that's what that's what wrong decisions do. That's what, in a wrong decision, all wrong decisions are decisions made outside of love. That's all a wrong decision is, is a decision made without love. It's not present. 
And so when we learn, when we understand what this is, we change our decisions. Some of these decisions may, may make you feel as if you're unloving. That's because you've been living an unloving life for so long and you've been making decisions based on a lack of love for so long. When you do act in love, it feels weird because you're not used to it. And that's why people feel guilt. That's why people feel shame. If you feel guilt or shame, it's because you've lived a life of, of uh, where there's a lack of love. And when you do live in love, you feel guilty. Because this whole planet, this entire planet is based on living in a lack of love. Living where love is not present. Or living or making decisions where love isn't present. We are choosing that. But that's how we've been taught. So we have to unteach ourselves. A celestial being, and I always use a celestial being as an example because celestial beings are the, the, the closest thing to perfection that we can see. Like God is the perfection. God is perfection, but we can't see that. No, we can see God in, in things that we can see the essence of the creator or the essence of God in a celestial being. But we can actually see the celestial being. We can actually feel the, the celestial being when they're present. We can see their presence and feel the presence. Now, you can feel God's presence, but you can't see it. You can't see the entity God or the entity the creator. But you can feel the presence. That I felt that a couple of times. So I know that the creator is there. But the, a celestial being I use because it's, it's something that's, that is non-physical but we can see physically with our eyes that's something that we can see we can't we can see it here in our physical but for the most part we can most people can one because they don't even believe that it is and they don't want to see something so bright they don't want to see something that's so true because uh, looking at us being in the presence of a celestial being means that we have to look at the imperfections of ourselves and that's one thing we don't want to do because everybody wants to be right you see everyone wants to be right so how do how if you want to be right and you think you're right, do you think you want to look at someone who's right to tell you that you're not or to show you that you're not, to show you that you're not loving? People believe that they're loving and they don't want to hear anybody say that they're not loving. So to look at a at physical evidence of of their lack of love, they don't want to do that. And so they won't see it because they, they don't want to see it. Not that they can't, but they can't because they don't want to just like truth it's not that people can't see the truth it's the, the truth it's not something that they desire so they don't see it because they have other other desires other desires oh let's see gotta get a car wash my friend's birthday is today and I told him I'll take him out to uh to lunch and uh so I gotta clean up the car so he has a clean car to ride around so that we have a clean car to ride around in I'm not getting behind her she got a bunch of stuff in her car and that just looks like a mess <laughs> it's like a mess anyway uh so I guess I'll end this video here um so yeah labels be mindful of the labels that you buy into that you believe in that you create your reality with um, because they are your limitations they are your limitations more and more try to accept the fact that you are a powerful soul more and more try to accept the fact that you have the ability to uh, let me get this stupid little piece of paper down here um, the ability to manifest all types of things that that is your true power that is your true power um, but don't don't try to do it to have things I mean those things come later but you know the thing is your your true desires are what what come to you and some you know we may think that we want things but most people don't want things they want joy and happiness and the thing is when you're on a path of truth and you want to be more loving and you when you become more loving you, what you realize is that the things that you thought you wanted to be happy aren't the things that you really want at all. It's something completely different. Some people don't even want anything like any material possessions. They don't want a lot of material possessions. They just want to be happy. And 
when you reach that point, you you understand that those things that you thought would make you happy, they're no longer we they're no longer a desire. Why? Because it was never the truth. The joy and the happiness was never going to come from the the material possessions ever. But you needed to to live in love or find love in order to. Uh, You had to live in love, live in love, and find love in order to realize that that's not what you wanted. You know. All right, I'm out. Talk to you guys later. Bye now.